Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Happy first day of spring. The birds, birds are chirping, the brooks are babbling, and the neighbors are yelling for me to turn down my nature sound CD. <laughs> now, uh, if you're in the Northeast, it may not feel like spring, since it's still pretty chilly today. Though just a few weeks ago, it was in the 60s. God, I wish it was winter again so I could wear shorts. <laughs> Today, you can't tell. You can't tell what everything's right. going to be in it. Yeah, you never know. Of course, uh, last week, uh, President Trump released his first budget. They're calling it a hard power budget because it features a $54 billion increase in military spending. And to pay for the new spending, Trump is cutting everything else, like the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which funds PBS. <laughs> look, 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 I know, but Trump's a real estate developer. It was only a matter of time before he put up condos on Sesame Street. <laughs> Trump is also... <laughs> Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? You can't. It's gone. <laughs> One of these things is not like the others. One of these things was cut from the budget. <laughs> Donald Trump's also eliminating the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. No, I am not surprised, because he is jealous of anyone who is well endowed. <laughs> Plus, Trump is slashing the EPA's budget by 31%, and the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, which fights invasive species like the sea lamprey, could see its funding slashed by 97%. If you're not familiar with the sea lamprey, you might know it as the vicious, flesh-eating hell beast from your worst nightmares. <laughs> or as Steve Bannon calls it, my mentor. <laughs> this budget... <laughs> yes. Oh, get off it! Get off it! Get off it! Get off it! This budget... <laughs> is so ruthless... It's cutting funding for Meals on Wheels. Really? Really? Cutting Meals on Wheels? That isn't just heartless. It's bad marketing. You always stick with things that rhyme. <laughs> meals on Wheels. Crack is whack. Hop on pop. <laughs> Two buck chuck. Avoid the noid. Be kind. Rewind. <laughs> this program provides elderly shut-ins just minimal nutrition and a scrap of human dignity. What kind of heartless monster would be against that? Did someone say fiscal conservative? <laughs> oh, hey! Say hello to my conservative pundit colleague, Stephen Colbert. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Hello, nation. Stay strong. Be brave. Now, uh, just to be clear, Stephen, you are not the character I used to play for my old show, are you? Because I, I really wouldn't want that to... That cuck, I could not be more different. Here's the difference. His favorite sandwich is a BLT, okay? I like a TLB. B stands for balls. It's delicious. <laughs> Put it in your mouth. Good to know. So, what's so important that you had to break into my show just now? Because, uh, I was doing the monologue. Oh, believe me, Steven, I had better things to do out here in the woods. I've been hunting the most dangerous game. You're hunting humans? <laughs> no, bears. Have you forgotten so soon? They are godless killing machines. All right? Besides, humans are out of season. No, Steven, I'm here because America needs me. Plus, I wanted to stop you from making an ass of yourself on network TV with your misguided analysis of Trump's budget. Oh, you think you can do better? Do better? My middle name is Do. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, well then, uh, I guess the stage is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Good man. Yes, indeed. 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, nation. You know, folks, Trump's budget is getting heat because it's supposedly cruel to old people for no reason. When, in fact, they've got a very good reason. And that brings us to tonight's word. <laughs> Screw unto others. Now, you heard the guy who normally sits here moaning about these cuts to Meals on Wheels, but that guy, he's a well-known grandma hugger. <laughs> People are saying that this budget lacks compassion, but White House budget director and 49-year-old temp Mick Mulvaney <laughs> knows that it's just the opposite. I think it's probably one of the most compassionate things we can do to actually tell you, you're, you're, programs you're, help the elderly. You're only kids. focusing on half of the equation, right? You're focusing on recipients of the money. We're trying to focus on both the recipients of the money and the folks who give us the money in the first place. Yes, you can't just focus on helping the needy and forget the people whose taxes pay for it. That's like praying for the accident victim who needed a transfusion and forgetting about the guy who's walking around a pint light now. <laughs> Give that guy a cookie. Now, Mulvaney <laughs> had to cut Meals on Wheels because they failed to meet their objectives. Yes, it's called Meals on Wheels, but how often do you see a hamburger driving down the highway? <laughs> now, now, folks, I know what you're saying. You're saying they did meet their objective, Stephen. They brought food to the elderly. Well, technically, yes, Greg. And we all know what happens to food after we eat it. We are literally throwing money down the toilet. <laughs> and Meals on Wheels started in 1972. Now, I haven't checked the stats, but I'm pretty sure all those people are dead now. <laughs> Besides, think about this. Mulvaney said the primary goal of Trump's budget is not driving Cheetos to Grandpa after he gets the munchies from his glaucoma pot. Okay? <laughs> It's defending America. And <laughs> these food-addicted seniors haven't killed any members of ISIS. If we want to keep America safe, why waste money on meals on wheels that could be used on weapon systems? Now, <laughs> a lot of people say that Mulvaney is being cruel to old people. That's not fair. He's also being cruel to young people. <laughs> because here's the deal, this budget, <laughs> This budget also cuts after-school lunch programs for poor kids. But again, for a very good reason. They're supposed to be educational programs, right? And that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to help kids who, can't, who don't get fed at home get fed so they do better in school. Guess what? There's no demonstrable evidence they're actually doing that. There's no demonstrable evidence they're actually helping results, helping kids do better in school. Yes, why feed children if they aren't doing better in school? Take the food away, and maybe they'll be hungry for knowledge. <laughs> and remember, Mulvaney's not doing this to be mean. He's looking out for taxpayers. I think it's fairly compassionate to go to them and say, look, we're not going to ask you for your hard-earned money anymore. Single mom of two in Detroit, okay? Good point, Mick. I, for one, wouldn't want to be the fellow who has to tell a single mom of two in Detroit, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm afraid we're going to feed your children. The only thing that worries me is that this isn't actually a budget. You see, this is just the president's wish list. And Mick Mulvaney is just Trump's magical monkey paw. <laughs> Congress... <laughs> Congress are the only ones who can make a budget. So my real worry here is that a lot of people might go to House.gov and find out how to call their congressman and tell them to protect kids and old people. And that could derail... <laughs> Because if they did that, if they called Congress and did that, that could derail all of Donald Trump's compassion. And that might upset that lonely old man. <laughs> upset him so much that he just becomes a shut-in, stays in the White House, doesn't even eat, and someone has to bring him a meal. <laughs> and that's the word. <laughs> that other guy's got a great show for you tonight. <laughs> Brian Cranston is here. And after the commercial break, there's going to be puppies, real puppies. So stick around. We'll be right back.